Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. Today is Friday morning. It's only 8.30, but I feel like I've had a really nice long morning already. With a little bit of thanks to the jet lag, Charlie and I are very comfortably getting up at around 5.45, 6 o'clock in the mornings at the moment. And I actually think the mornings are getting lighter noticeably. So now it's pretty much fully light outside. And yeah, I think we're just gonna try and really stick to these timings, even on weekends. It's really important to stick to the same bedtime and wake up time, even on weekends, if you want to get the best <laughs> quality sleep, according to all the podcasts that I've been listening to. But um, I'm heading to Dalesford, <laughs> surprise, surprise, for Pilates at 10 this morning with Chloe, which I'm very much looking forward to. So I'll leave in, I'll probably leave in 45 minutes but there are a couple of little tasks that I want to do before I go. I spent a long time this morning just really savoring my skin skincare experience. In the mornings after I've done my micellar water, I put on my Le Serum, and then I put on my eye cream and my vitamin C, and I really like to have my vitamin C serums just sitting on my skin for quite a long amount of time, and I feel like that is just that for me is real me time. I will listen to gardening podcasts. I will tidy up upstairs, do whatever. And this morning I was listening to some gardening podcasts about supplements. You might be thinking, how do supplements link in with gardening? Well, I'm not talking about my wild nutrition <laughs> this time, although I do love my wild nutrition. Instead, I'm talking about a different kind of supplement for your gardening, and that is one of my favorite things in the world, coffee. Coffee grounds in particular. So at this time of year, it is, this is cold. <laughs> I forgot to drink the rest of it. I got too carried away with watching my podcast. As I'm filming this, it is I think the 2nd or 3rd of February, which for me and my garden in the climate that we live in is the perfect time of year for mulching and adding nutrients or supplementing my compost with extra nutrients which are going to, in the end, benefit the vegetables and things that I grow in the garden. So, coffee grounds, you may know that we've got, you're actually balanced on it right now, a really fabulous bean to cup coffee machine, which does mean that we, in this household, have a lot, I don't want to tip it too much, can you see? Yeah. Anyway, in there, we've got, well, I'll just get my hands dirty and show you properly. Every time we make a coffee, we are left with this like disc of coffee grounds. It is really fantastic for your garden to actually use these coffee grounds when you are mulching. So mulching is something that you do at this time of year and also at the end of summer to basically create a layer of protection and goodness over your raised beds or wherever you're going to do your planting. And over, I would say, four or five months, depending on what material you're using to mulch, the microorganisms and particularly the worms within the soil will take the goodness from things like the coffee grounds and bring it down into the soil and then that goodness gets returned into the produce that you grow. So what I like to do, particularly at this time of year, because for our garden, coffee grounds take around two to four months to get broken down in the soil. The more healthy and full of microorganisms your soil is, the quicker things will get broken down. So in four months time we will be in April, February, March, April, no we'll be in May, <laughs> fantastic, which is exactly when I will start to do the big plant out. The majority of the things that I'll be growing in my greenhouse will get planted out and by that time the coffee grounds will have been nicely broken down in the soil, in the raised beds, and the soil will be full of nutrients ready to help my plants grow. So that is what we do with our coffee grounds. I collect them up in a bucket and then when I'm doing the mulching, which will hopefully be this weekend, I will just spread them in amongst the mulch to add the nutrients into our soil. So yeah, that's a nice little, a little tip for any other gardeners out there. So coffee grounds are a really fantastic source of nitrogen, phosphorus, and something else which I can't remember. A little bit of magnesium, which are great for the soil. Some people are like, oh, isn't it a bit acidic? But actually when you brew your coffee in the machine to make your morning coffee, that tends to de-acidify your 
coffee grounds and obviously you don't want to just straight away sprinkle your coffee grounds on the soil because that can create a little bit of a water barrier you want to make sure they're broken down so doing it at this time of year when you've got plenty of time for the soil microorganisms to do that breaking down for you it's the best time of year to do it so that is one kind of sustainable free fertilizer thing that i like to do in the garden the other one you've already seen me doing in a few vlogs and that is collecting <laughs> loo roll and kitchen roll tubes. The shape of these and the fact that they will decompose, they are natural cardboard, so they're not dyed. I don't think any loo roll tubes are dyed, that would just be ridiculous, but it means that they break down and they don't add any chemicals into the soil. For things like sweet peas in particular, which develop really long tap roots and that don't like root disturbance. So even in a root trainer, which I did order some from Amazon, a root trainer looks like this. And I will use these as well because now is the time that I need to plant a lot of sweet peas. You fold them up like this. I'll be doing this later on this afternoon. Fill these with soil, plant your sweet peas in, and then you can open it up and very carefully lift your fully rooted sweet pea plant out when the time is right. But even then, you are disturbing the roots a little bit. Whereas if you plant your sweet peas in a toilet roll or kitchen roll tube, you can actually plant the entire thing because this will just decompose in your compost before the end of the summer. We also go through a few of these Dalesford salad boxes every week. Um, on Mondays normally I'll pick up some salad that we will have with our dishes throughout the week. These are compostable containers and what I like to do, again as you'll see later, is when I'm filling my toilet roll tubes with soil, I then put them all in the salad container and then any compost that comes out the bottom is just kept nice and neat in those. So those are a few of my little sustainable <laughs> gardening tips that are particularly relevant for this time of year. I've got somebody down here waiting for me to go out to the greenhouse because I swear he knows he knows that I've been collecting like greenhouse bits here and probably the fact that I'm wearing an outdoorsy kind of jacket. I'm all dressed ready to go to Pilates. This is a really lovely, um, it's actually perfect for zipping to Pilates from the car straight to Pilates when it's not really, really cold. If it was freezing, I'd probably pop a coat on over the top. You've got this padded, almost gilet section, really nice big neckline and then knitted sleeves, which is gorgeous and then don't know how the lighting is here, but these are my best favorite Amazon leggings. I'll leave these exact ones linked down below. And they are just, if you've ever worn or tried on the Lululemon Align leggings, you'll know that they're really nice and high-waisted, just the most perfect kind of between a green and a brown and a black color. So great for just wearing around the house. I will be wearing them for, la for, for lattes. <laughs> Wearing around the house, wearing for Pilates, wearing for gardening, they are so comfortable. Literally like a fifth of the price of the Lululemon Align leggings and they are the perfect thickness. I think I said it last year as well, but if there is one thing that you pick up from Amazon based on my recommendation, you will love these leggings. So I'll leave them in the description down below. Anyway, I've been chatting away for too long. Come on then, bunny, let's go outside. You go outside, Dixie? Sugar? Come on then morning duties of misting my microgreens. So far the only one which is showing any signs of actually germinating are my peas. Can you see there's a little bit, oh there's a bigger bit there, a little bit of green shooting up. So I think my peas will be the first microgreens to do anything exciting. However I have decided I'm going to do another batch today and I'm going to let them germinate in the house because I still think it's just too cold in here for them. Now I have to admit, I'd hoped to have um, had time to do these sooner, but these have now been soaking for like four days. No, maybe not that long, maybe three days, maybe two and a half. But I don't think I want to leave them to soak any longer. So just, oh my gosh, that water is freezing. I really hope I've not ruined these, but I will definitely plant these up later. But I just, I'm gonna take them out of the water because I think they've definitely had enough. Oh, you're lovely and so sweet. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> Bye.
My goodness, it is chilly in this car this morning. Let's get my heated seats on. There we go. I'm still going through my flapjacks. I didn't think I'd made very many, but actually, they're so filling that you only need one and then you are perfectly satisfied. They also make for really nice little breakfast. Grab it, grab it and go. Because essentially everything in them is kind of breakfasty. It's, well, if you follow me on TikTok, you'll have seen the full recipe. But the main bulk of it is banana, oats. Um, I put a little bit of oat milk. What else did I put? And loads of seeds. So actually, it's a really nice, quite... Um, in women. Now, those effects are relative further into the effects of caffeine on hormones. <laughs> Dr. Andrew Huberman going off about caffeine again. What was I saying? Yeah, basically a really good breakfast bar to have on the go. The theme of today's vlog is coffee. They've got a new ethically sourced organic coffee range here at Dalesford. I love these little jars whenever I finish one. I get the spirit tea quite often and the jars are so useful, especially for storing things in the greenhouse. I kind of want to get one of these just for the jar, but that would be a little bit ridiculous. I think they've got, oh no, that's ground coffee. They've got beans, because our machine just needs beans. Oh, yes. I thought these were going to be ground coffee as well, but it sounds like that is the whole bean. Can I not read? <laughs> House blend coffee beans. That sounds wonderful. I think I'll pick up some of those. Okay, this has given me such a lovely idea for our wedding. How nice would it be to have a foliage heart? <laughs> I think the base of this is quite sturdy branches. That would be the challenging thing, making the base. But then once you've got it, you could add festive foliage at Christmas time. Hmm, I might speak to one of the florists here and see if I can get a bespoke heart wreath order put in. How wonderful. And then, Maybe I could hang it on the back wall of my greenhouse when it's not being used for wedding or Christmas decoration. Where could I put it at other times of the year? Let me know what you think. I mean, it's just, is it you? No, it's not you, but this nice rich foliage does tend to have, well, bird poo, <laughs> but does tend to have quite good lasting. Always have a nice, fresh, organic herbal tea for before Pilates. The most beautiful, bright studio in all the Cotswolds. Looks like we're doing some bar this morning with the chairs. back home again you probably just saw me snipping these from the hedgerow i'm inspired to make a sorry about the wind a willowy um heart wreath in the greenhouse this afternoon inspired by the heart wreaths that i just saw at dalesford but in order to make them more malleable and more bendy they need to be submerged in water for an hour or so i was thinking my sinks are not big enough so i'm actually just going to stick them in here um hmm Let's see, I need to find like a big rock or something to stick them under. She's just cold. That should do the trick. Okay, this heatless 
this sausage has only been in for an hour and a half while I did some emails. I did spray my hair with some water, um, but the less time you leave it in, I find the less time they last, but we shall see. I'm gonna let these drop out a little bit and go and get myself some lunch. Look at this, just in time for my lunch. We've had our all plants delivery box. The podcast I was listening to last week, and actually I still haven't finished about coffee, was saying how when you have coffee and you really enjoy it, because chemically you get these great feelings after you have a coffee and it makes you so addicted to your coffee that you associate those amazing feelings with even your coffee mug for example and it was saying how you attach emotions to certain things so if you love your coffee you get emotionally attached to your coffee mug i would say i am emotionally attached to all plants delivery boxes when i see this on the doorstep when i come home it fills me with joy because I know that I'm gonna have a freezer full, free, freezer full, freezer full of delicious meals. You've heard me talking about all plants a lot in the past. Charlie and I are humongous fans. We have switched so many people to being also obsessed with all plants for good reason. Um, also, you'll have heard me talking a lot about gut health lately and switching from ultra processed foods to more whole foods. And I'm not gonna lie, when I first started doing a lot more research into this, there was maybe 5% of me that was like, oh my goodness, can I no longer enjoy my super easy, delicious all plants? Because instantly, when I think of ultra processed food, I think of freezer meals and food which is really quick and really tasty. For me, all plants is a delicious meal which yes I get out the freezer and it's really quick and really easy but the difference between all plants and oh my gosh there are so many differences but what makes all plants fantastic especially if you are really conscious about eating things that are good for your gut is that the ingredients within all plants meals are super high quality nutritious whole foods whole foods being the most important thing here there are no rubbish ingredients in here not loads of chemicals if you take the back oh, i love the packaging it's so bright and fun especially on a gray miserable january morning february morning got the yellow from the box the yellow from my daffodils it's just so fun so optimistic if you were to look at the ingredients list and this is what i always do now if in doubt you need to recognize the names of all of the ingredients and it should be proper food not conglomabenzone or <laughs> whatever the chemical name is so for example in this is actually one of my all-time favorites from all plants the sticky teriyaki udon noodles you know when you just want something warming and hearty and delicious at lunchtime ingredients udon noodles portobello mushrooms carrots edamame chestnut mushrooms savoy cabbage tamari garlic ginger apple puree it's all stuff that is good for you so all plants they are chef prepared plant-based meals charlie and i are not plant-based but we as a result of <laughs> listening to tim Spector and his words of words of wisdom we are trying to increase the amount of plant-based foods that we have in our diet i would say we probably do at least four days a week where we are plant-based Maybe we'll have an egg in the morning. Maybe I will put milk in my coffee. You know, we're not super strict, but we are trying to increase the amount of plants that we have in our diet because the more plant variety you have, the better for your gut, as I have said 10 million times. And to be honest, when it comes to creating plant-based meals, some of them can be quite time consuming and we do live in a world where we are time poor but sometimes you just don't want to sacrifice a really good nutritious meal that's good for you, good for your gut and super tasty but sometimes you just don't have time to prepare something from scratch and yeah that for me is one of the many reasons why I will always be a hardcore all plants fan. So little unboxing, had to get my favourite of course. I got a couple of the bigger ones because both Charlie and I do like to have the same thing. So for example, this is the lasagna. Oh, that sounds delicious. I will probably make my own garlic bread <laughs> to go with this, but oh my gosh, delish. I think on average you get around two of your five a day with a lot of the all plants dishes as well. So they really are good for you as well as being super quick and wonderfully easy to prepare. Tikka masala, obviously no chicken in this. I think it's pretty butternut. Oh, tofu, amazing. 
Tofu is something that I'm also not very good at cooking with, so I'm very grateful to get tofu in here. Miso and tamari Buddha bowl. This is another of my favorites. And look at the amount of different plants that you get in this. A Buddha bowl would take me at least like an hour to put together. I ain't got time for that, so just super duper easy. You can microwave this in seven minutes, two of your five a day, a source of protein, low in saturated fat. And again, looking at the ingredients, it's all good for you, whole foods, edamame, tofu, bulgur wheat, chickpeas, carrot, coconut milk, coriander, ginger, amazing. And, oh my gosh, this is what I'm gonna have for my lunch. This is one of their new dishes, which could not be a more delicious sounding dish. Can I even tell you without my mouth watering? Rigatoni bolognese with almond parmesan. Hallelujah, that sounds amazing. I did do a workout this morning, so a pasta dish is gonna fill me right up. A rigatoni in a tomato sauce with mushrooms, lentils and walnuts, and a herb crumb. Herb crumb, two words that just make my mouth water. Our passionate team of chefs cook your all plants meals in small batches. Oh my gosh, it even says who made my dish. My dish was made by Joseph. That is so lovely. Right, I'm gonna stick this in the recycling. My darlings, if you would like to try out All Plants, which as you can guess, I so highly recommend, I will leave a link down below to their website. And if you use the code Josie35, that will get you 35% off your first three boxes, whether you're plant-based or not. If you just wanna have a freezer full of delicious, super easy, plant-based, wholesome, good for you, nutrient-rich dishes, then could not recommend this any more highly. Look how colorful this selection is. Dun, dun, dun. Gonna have a very colorful freezer. Right, I'm gonna put the rigatoni bolognese in the agar for my lunch. Alexa, set timer for 35 minutes. Okay, I know my presentation is never anywhere near as good as it looks on the box, but it is how it tastes that matters, and this smells mouth-wateringly delicious. Look at that herb crumb. I can even see lentils in here, so I've got a little bit of extra protein. The rigatoni, I have to admit, I just had a little bit, and it is perfectly al dente. I can't even talk to you guys, my mouth is watering so much. I have a feeling this might become a new favorite. Oh! Yum. Okay, post lunch and I am back in the greenhouse. I've got my ginger and lemongrass spirit tea from Dalesford, which is really lovely. Now I'm going to do some sweet pea potting. I'm going to spend about, well, I've got a call at three, so I need to spend no more than an hour and a half in here. And I'm going to do as many sweet peas as I can get done in that time. And if I have got time, I'll do some microgreens as well like a little bit of a stuck record at the moment. So I'm gonna do the sweet peas in at the root trainers just because I've got this set here. I'm actually gonna do a whole set of sweet peas in these and then bring them into the house to germinate. Because it could get down to as cold as minus one or minus two in the next couple of days. So I'm gonna pop you on the time lapse. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna stick something on the sweet podcast on YouTube. Productive session and here is what I got done so on the top here and this whole thing including the tray which is quite handy for just keeping everything neat and tidy I'm going to take into the house where obviously it's a lot warmer and everything should do a little bit better when it comes to germinating because I think it's around maybe like 17 degrees ish don't quote me on that that the seeds need in order to actually come to life don't know about you but I feel like I'm the same I don't really come to life unless it's at least 20 degrees but by taking these into the house as opposed to this cold greenhouse in fact we do have the thermometer it is 
11 degrees in here right now, so not quite warm enough for germination, despite the fact that one of my peas, as we saw earlier, did start to start to shoot. Um, but, so we've got in my Dalesford salad boxes, broccoli natalino microgreens. They all just look like soil. Um, cress, which I think would be quite a quick one, and spinach. Now, I know for a fact that spinach seeds actually like to be slightly compressed. So what I'm going to do is put my cress on top of my spinach just for just for the weekend and then I will let it be free and open. I'll leave the lids on until we've got some very small little seedlings and then when they are visible and about you know, half a centimetre, they'll probably come up quite yellow because of lack of light, lack of photosynthesis. But then once they get that big, I will take the lids off and maybe bring them back in here because once they've germinated, the warmth isn't quite so important. And then in here, with a plastic lid on, the plastic lid is fantastic for keeping the moisture in. You can already see here a little bit of steam starting to generate. And that just means I don't need to be quite so on it when it comes to the watering. So that'll go in our pantry and enjoy the warmth of the house. Now, I had a another Amazon delivery, a load more seed trays ahead of the very busy seed planting season that's about to commence. Last year, I had some rather more flimsy seed trays and I thought it was such a shame so many of them broke. A lot of them were biodegradable, thankfully, but a lot of them just cracked because the plastic was so thin. I'll leave these exact ones linked down below and you'll find you'll find things like this on my Amazon storefront as well if you want to if you ever want to just see, oh, what was that thing that Josie mentioned on Amazon? Um then the link in my Instagram bio is now a link tree, so that will take you straight to my Amazon storefront, or we do have a link in the description box down below, just so that everything is all in one place. But these are much sturdier plastic um, little seed starter areas, so I'll just take these when the time is right, probably not today, because my call is in 40 minutes. Um, I will fill the seed trays with compost, put the lid on them, and they'll be perfectly fine in here once temperatures start to warm up. And then I think these could be great if I really do start to do a lot of planting things like lettuce and salad leaves, because then you can just put loads of soil in there and um, prick them out when they start to germinate. So I won't need those for a little while. I've made myself a fresh cup of tea so that my hands can warm up because I'm now going to go and fish out my branches and have a little play with this heart-shaped wreath idea. Oh, it's so cold. I was thinking if I ever get into majorly cold swimming, I could just submerge myself in here and <laughs> probably do the trick. Okay, so this is the heart-shaped wreath that I saw at Dalesford. It was £85, <laughs> so I thought that is definitely something I want to try to make myself. I've got the majority of, well, I hope these sticks will be big enough, but the only thing I don't have is the pussy willow, which is the kind of willow that's got the pom-poms on it, which I can probably get from a florist when I next find somewhere. Maybe in Chipping Norton tomorrow I might be able to get some. But what I should be able to do is create the shape. I've got some green ribbon over there, I can do the bow. But what I thought I might do is see if I can forage some grasses from the garden and make a kind of straw bow like this one. I thought that looked really pretty. Um, love this, like I showed you earlier, but I don't know if it will be quite so effective on a small heart wreath. So let's start by creating the structure and then we'll try to make it look pretty. is I'm creating these two um, bundles which I have bound together with some floristry wire. Every time I pick up a twig, I'm just checking that it's got a nice bit of bend to it and it doesn't snap. I've discarded a couple of bits which have snapped. It's important to just do this nice and slowly. 
because it could snap, but once it dries out, if it hasn't snapped during this process, it shouldn't do. Um, and then I just went out to the garden and snipped from one of the grasses in the herbaceous border, some of this, just to add a little bit of color into the, um, the weaving, let's say. So now, this is number two in this hand. I've already done this once. I'm just taking the floristry wire, pinching it down at the bottom, and wrapping it around a few times, just to secure everything in together. I've got five branches Ooh, in each. There we go, fairly secure. Now this is quite unattractive, but I will find a way of hiding it at the end. Now I'm just gonna very lightly weave the branches and the grasses together. The branches are still a little bit wet, which is probably helping their movability. Not doing anything too precise here, just doing a little bit of twisting so that everything's a little bit woven in together. Just see, I'm doing just a simple over and under, nothing precise at all, kind of like I'm deciding to plait a few bits of the twigs. Nothing too jazzy. Okay, now let's hope that these will all twist down. I don't mind if a few of the strands poke out, that's actually quite nice. Okay, I'm not sure how I'm gonna stop it completely pinging away from each other. I think what I need to do now is attach these two together down at the bottom with some more floristry wire. Okay, my two bundles are now securely together. So, I'm gonna try, sorry you can't see my face by the way. It's either you see my face or you see what I'm doing. I'm gonna try bending these back into the heart shape. Okay, it's not looking anywhere near as good as the Dalesford one, but I am not a professional florist. So what I realized looking at their photo is that their um, woven bits are quite a lot longer and there are some bits which go all the way down from the tip of the heart to the bottom. And they are probably actually attached down here in order to keep that bending from like pinging up again. So what I've had to do, because mine aren't quite long enough, is actually, you can't really see it, but there is a little bit of floristry wire here which is pulling down from the top to the bottom. Now, it is clearly a heart shape, but it's not looking too fabulous. So what I think I'm gonna do is, um, maybe I should get a little bit more of the woven grasses. I mean, this is just a first attempt, so I'm definitely not expecting it to be perfect in any way. heading out on another foraging mission. This is what I put in a second ago. I think I'm gonna grab some of this to make that lovely bow shape down at the bottom. Okay, you guys, this is where you're gonna think I've lost the plot a little bit, but I'm doing the heatless curls method on my straw. So just like in your hair, where you add more bits of hair as you go down, imagine the wreath is the silk sausage and the straw is my hair. I'm just adding more straw. This is totally me making it up as I go along. Um, I'm gonna add it from behind, actually. Adding more hair as I go and then twisting it round the heart structure and it's actually turning out pretty good. I'm just adding a few more straw bits in every time from behind and then 
twisting it round. Who'd have thought heatless curl technique for my foraged heart-shaped garden wreath. Okay guys, my call is in six minutes. So this is where we're at so far, a very rustic, exceptionally rustic, having a bad hair day, heatless curled straw and twig wreath. It's got a little bit of a bend to it, so what I'm going to do during my call is um, I'm going to put this underneath something heavy so that it attempts to flatten out, and then when I finish the call, what I think I'm going to do is get more straw, do a little bit more winding, and then do a big bow at the bottom. It looks a little bit messy now, but I have got faith, and I feel like this could turn out really beautifully. Okay, 45 minutes later, finished my call, and I have gathered a little bit more straw from the grasses from the herbaceous border. Let's see if my flattening has worked any magic. Uh, a little bit. I mean, it looks quite scruffy. I think maybe I'll do a little bit more tidying up. So I'm taking some of the more uh, sturdy grasses, wedging it down into there and then wrapping it round just to try and tidy it up a tiny bit. Obviously, I don't want it to be too neat and precise, but it's a little bit wild and hairy at the moment. It's when the grasses come to an end, they start to get a bit hairy, like here. So again, like the heatless curls, adding another one in, joining it to the old one. Continuing to wrap. <laughs> it's funny, this is literally the exact same technique as I use with my heatless waves. Okay, I'm starting to get a lot happy with how this is looking. Now, when I've got to the end, I'm just wrapping these final bits of straw around this middle section and it's also a really great way of hiding the wire and then what I'm going to have to do is like tuck them in to other straw bits so that they then fold down. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that actually. I might unfortunately have to add just a little bit more wire to secure these or can I just tuck them in up there? I'm going to try to avoid using wire and just use this as almost like a string. Dickie! Lynn! That's a sheep, my baby! Okay, so this is where we're at so far. A very rustic straw heart. I think it'll look really pretty. Do we think a ribbon as a little bow down at the bottom? Or do we think... I should gather some more straw. Maybe it's got enough straw as it is. Yeah, I think it's got enough straw. I'm gonna try a little bit of ribbon. Perfect, because it hides the wire. Do you know what? I think I'd love to watch some YouTube videos to learn how to tie a bow properly, but... I think that that is rather cute. And where you've got the straw hanging down in the middle, you can't really see that wire anymore. Still got a bit of a bend to it. So again, I think I'll leave it underneath that tray with the plant pot on it overnight. So it should flatten out. But for like a completely off the cuff DIY project, using completely foraged things, aside from the ribbon and the um, wire, I'm actually really happy with that. This would be such a nice little, you know, school project or if you have, if you want to do something handmade and you've got quite a rustic, like shabby chic style house and you want to do some handmade Valentine's Day decorations, 
<laughs> it's kind of cheesy, but I love it. I feel like I want to leave it up in here. What do you think? Can you see? Or like up there? Well, I'm going to flatten it overnight and then in the next vlog we can decide where it's going to live. But yeah, quite pleased with that little random craft project. Okay, my darlings, back up in my dressing room. I don't know why I bother saying that because you can you can see where I am. <laughs> but also, I apologise, I've actually not put on makeup today. Um, I have to say, <laughs> in real life, in the camera, in the mirror, my skin looks really good and I look quite fresh and fine without makeup. But when I, it's what the camera does. The camera gives me additional under eye bags and whatever. Never mind, never mind. So I came inside and I was a bit peckish and I grabbed, um, do you remember in Thursday's? Thursday's video? I did an Ocado unboxing with you and I said I got these Clear Spring Organic Sea Veg Crispies. Just opened one up to try them. For, my first thought was, that is a lot of plastic. My second thought was that is going to be a really good little plant pot. So again, at this time of year especially, I will keep anything that is this kind of size, shape, can hold soil. Um, you can probably see, but I can't. I don't think it's got holes in the bottom, but I'll just take um, a screwdriver or something and stab some holes in for some drainage and that is a really perfect little plant pot. Great size. Obviously nothing that has a tap root. Um, but these, as you can see, light as air. These are very tasty. They don't feel like they're gonna fill me up at all. It's literally like, not that I'm hungry, <laughs> you know, sometimes in the afternoon, maybe it's 10%, no, 80% boredom. Not boredom, but like, oh, I just want to be eating something right now, but you're not actually hungry. It's that kind of feeling. And I love umami flavors. I just find them very satisfying. So these, are satisfying me, but they're certainly not going to fill me up. Mmm, I love the taste of seaweed. Salty. The reason I came up here is because I just had a delivery, which I think is so amazing, from Holland Cooper, and they have released a new range of gilets, which huh, are just quite frankly amazing. We're all thinking it, so I'm just going to say it. They are very Schoffel-esque, complete with the um, leather on the edging. They've got a beautiful, in fact, the quality is better than Schoffel, I have to say. Beautiful leather zip. You've got a brass, um, what do you call it? Brass zip detail. And then, oh, look how beautiful that is. You've got the HC leather crescent moon and Holland Cooper written around the back there really gorgeous and I already know firstly I already know that Charlie's going to want one of these even though it is a female design I know that he's going to want a men's one so how many colors does it come in three colors this is the kind of olivey one which is my top choice I would say oh and they're just so nice for an extra layer of warmth you've got little fleecy pockets oh with a little press stud that's a nice design idea because most of the time you just want it like closed perfect oh i love this this is a great shout Holland cooper very clever to release your own countryside gilets and as their countryside ambassador i feel like this is just the perfect perfect delivery for me how gorgeous so that is the olive color wish i had makeup on and was dressed more appropriately to show you these number two is i'm going to call this actually this is quite olivey as well maybe that one's more of like a taupe I'm not sure they probably have color names this one i would say is kind of like a sage sage or a rosemary color yeah, rosemary. Rosemary that maybe needs a little bit of water. Your rosemary is a bit dehydrated if it's this color, but often mine is. This is a really nice one because you've got the contrast. It's a bit more of a contrast between the piping and the actual color of the gilet. This is so gorgeous. Love these. I'm going to snip the labels off. And then the one that no doubt Charlie would nick if 
I'm sure we can just get this in a bigger size for him, is the dark green. Such a classic colour. Oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it when I saw these. I was like, wow, that is what I spend most of my life wearing. There we go, the dark green with the contrast piping. <gasps> so lovely, press stud on the pocket. I've been wearing the same leggings all day, but this is, this is it. <laughs> this is my new uniform. This is what I'll be wearing all the time when I'm gardening, nipping out to do my errands. Colin Cooper, you have smashed it with these. Absolutely fabulous. And then they also very kindly sent over this really lovely knit. I can't be bothered to take my current knit off, um, but really nice detail. You see how it's a little bit more of a thick knit down there and a bit more loose up at the top. You've got the classic gold buttons, really nice almost waffle detail on the sleeves. Oh, and it feels so soft. How absolutely gorgeous. What a stunning collection. Couldn't be more of a Josie collection if it tried, which is fabulous. Oh, looking at the time, I don't have my watch on. Right, I've got another call in nine minutes. This is too many calls for my liking for a Friday afternoon. Um, so I'm gonna get cracking with that and then maybe start to think about dinner. Okay, we are heading out and I'm being a boomerang again. Where are we going, darling? We're going back to our favourite place. I feel like we just don't even need to say it anymore. Yeah, I know. Well, I, look, I mean, it, it's tw it, it's like 15, 16 minutes from our house. When you're driving. Yeah, when so, I'm driving, it's like so often we're minutes. like, should we go to the supermarket? And we're like, well, why will we go to the supermarket when we go to the Ellsford? Yeah, no, it's someone organic. commented on no, a video the, the other day being like, do you ever go to Tesco or Aldi? No. No, because actually the farm shops are closer, so... Well, it's, it's, do you know what, it's, it's also, there's loads of reasons why. Like, firstly, we obviously want to be eating organically if we can. Mm -hmm. um, it isn't necessarily always more expensive. In certain things it is, but like with meat and stuff like that, it isn't. Because um, you get much more for your money with mm. what do you do, like the size of a chicken breast or whatever. Yeah. Um, I remember when we like <clears> first discovered that in Merman something. Yeah. Like, and we were like, what? It's cheaper yeah, well, I'd eat, I'd, 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 I'll eat like three or four chicken breasts from Sainsbury's or Tesco's. Yeah. Because there's so much water in it. And one from Dalesford. Very true. So there's that. Um, also with Dalesford, obviously, it's a lot more sustainable in terms of packaging. Um, and it's a nicer customer experience. We do occasionally go to like Waitrose or Sainsbury's, don't we? Um, to pick stuff up. But do you know what? More and more it's annoying me, particularly M&S actually, where during like berry season, mm. all the, they have a British berry section. Yeah. But then they're still selling stuff from like Peru, from Bolivia, and you're like... Yeah, but actually, in that chapter on Spoonfed, that was one of the myths, that you should always buy British berries, when actually it is more, it can be more sustainable to buy berries from overseas, because of the amount that we have to heat greenhouses. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, it, there's just also something about it that is nice about, especially at the moment with everything going on financially yeah. in this country, supporting British producers. Do you know what I mean? You only have yeah. to speak to local farmers who are struggling and you're like, let's support them rather than buying stuff from abroad where it's a lot cheaper. Yeah. But I don't and know. And this is uh, not yeah. just a Cotswold thing. Even when we lived in Clapham, we would go to the Venn Street Market. Exactly. It actually yeah. works out cheaper to buy food. Often it works out cheaper or better value to buy food from farmers markets and yeah. you are supporting and local. And it doesn't matter if it's muddy or like right. or gnarly shapes. Dalesford certainly isn't you. cheaper or more affordable, but I would say the quality for us, we would value the quality over um, like a like Waitrose, for example. Are we trying to really justify good. our Dale's sort of addiction? We, we don't have to justify it. We I don't drink alcohol. I save a small fortune not going out and drinking. So yeah. uh, my guilty Spend pleasure is spending it on, on good meat, good veg, Very wholesome. good this is dairy. Nice. This, from? this is from Drake's, British brand. This is, is made in the UK. Wool? Is that what you call it? Boiled I don't wool? really know. I kind of feel like I, I wear a lot of this because I, I get quite hot quite quickly. I actually don't wear coats anymore. Have you worn the barber thing that I got you for Christmas yet? No, I haven't. It's like a gilet in the yeah, middle and knitted sleeves on the edge. I should actually. I get into a bit of a rut with what I'm wearing. I just chuck on the same stuff. Yeah. Have um, you noticed what I'm wearing? Yeah, that's cool. Is it a shuffle? No, it's Holland Cooper. It's wow. It's Holland Cooper. Oh, it actually looks better quality as well. That's literally what I just said. It's got when are they? Going. Can you eat? If, if, I don't know if... Um, they don't do menswear. I just was going to say, message to Holland Cooper founder. <laughs> Can you hurry up with your menswear brand? Can, well, can you, Otherwise, I'll beat you, you to it soon. You should just get one of these, like in a large size. Yeah, because I, I, to be honest, to shuffle the quality's gone down rapidly, and apparently, shuffle that quality's gone down massively. But apparently, that's down to Ukraine. 
because I think someone said to me that they were being made in Ukraine. Do you know what? The Ukraine crisis makes you realize how much that country produces and mm. how reliant we are on Ukraine. Mm. Um, because it's, it, there's so many things that are made there that you never thought of, like car parts and everything. Um, so it's pretty shocking, really. Yeah. But yeah, so Dalesford and then back but we're also buying stuff for lunch tomorrow we could have obviously done what isn't great is we should have thought about this earlier but we just oh, realized we said to you, do you run out of parmesan anything? and we want to desperately make carbonara tonight <laughs> these are the joys of living in the country you can't just re walk down the road to a no. shop and grab parmesan unfortunately no. um which is definitely a first world problem but yeah off to dalesford i wanted i don't I'd, know if you're allowed to say first world problem anymore I lose track of what you're allowed to say and not allowed to say. I'm I'm not going to lose. Our intentions sleep. are good. I'm not okay. going to lose sleep over saying that because I, it's yeah. recognizing we have a very uh, we're very fortunate with our life. We have an amazing life. We work hard for it, and um, we've got big dreams. But ultimately, we can't feel bad for getting where we want to be, and we want to affect lots of positive change as we move forward. Um, and that is Charlie's our TED talk. positive energy. That's Charlie's yeah? TED talk. And and um, and that's where we're at. But yeah, the. Um, the one thing I would say is I'm super excited. You were just saying about it getting lighter in the evenings, feeling yeah. very positive, and even yeah. just getting in the garden tomorrow. Yeah, that's I've been craving that just mm. to get in well, the garden. I've been in the greenhouse nearly all afternoon. I want to get my hands muddy and mm. get in the garden. Getting your hands muddy is very good for your gut microbiome, as is having. So dogs. playing rugby is good for your gut microbiome. Definitely. And there you go. And Definitely. the rugby and Six Nations starts tomorrow. England Come on, England, England, Scotland, and England have been Scotland. dreadful for a long time. So oh my gosh. we will see. Right, let's crack on, mate. And the ammo. Okay, so seeing as we're back here, I thought I'd take a closer look at the construction. They've actually got the thicker bamboo ones, bamboo-esque, going all the way down the back as a support. So now I know. Beautiful, isn't it? I could just stare at that all day. Stunning. It looks like a photo, but it is a painting, isn't it? No, I think it is a photo. Is it? Pigment print. Pigment print. I don't know. Hmm. Very helpful. Always so much table inspo. This is beautiful. Imagine having this as our wedding crockery. Now, whenever I see amazing floral sculptures like this, I'm thinking about our wedding. How amazing to have something like this. And, you know, I could spend the weeks leading up to it creating stuff like this. Just moss in the bottom, probably a load of twigs stuck in chicken wire. Looks like it. Just a little bit of a little bit of foliage foraging would have to happen. We not got that. No, it's pretty, isn't it? Very cute. Hmm. Nice in my greenhouse. A Shakespearean botanical. Let's get it for his oh, next time. We came to Dalesford to get parmesan and. Just our luck. <laughs> it's one of the only cheeses that they've sold out of. Oh dear. What alternatives can we find? <gasps> yes! <laughs> we'll, have, we'll take the lot. We'll take the lot. Do you love it? No. We found a massive bit, but now we need to try cutting it. <gasps> this will light. This will crack off now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This, this is an Italian method, isn't it? Yeah. It's called Parmesan um, chisel. When you have this carbonara, we will know how it's so working. What are you having? Tea? Not cheese. No, not cheese. Wow. Okay. Whoa, half of that. That's epic. Nice. Hey, look at that. That's just rusted. That's epic. Wow, that's awesome.